What they're going to be playing, though, as we talked about before, is Hereford Base. This is uh, one of the many maps in Rainbow Six, and we're going to be seeing this one play out. And something that intrigues me, you can see it coming up on the screens now, it's, it's a very kind of vertical map. It's based on floors. And I mean, what was the thought going into that one? One of our main mechanics uh, is our repel feature. So as long as you come up close to a building, you get a prompt to repel up the, uh, the, map, the side of the map. This is prevalent in most of our maps. So uh, you'll see a lot of the maps have this sort of verticality to them. And I mean, you talk about unique mechanics. Uh, something that already stood out to me is there's a whole lot of uh, gadgets, gizmos going, around, going on around the, uh, the gameplay. And uh, what kind of stands out to you as something that, that you don't see every day in terms of gadgetry? Uh, for me, it's the replay value. Um, a lot of these maps that you have are very uh, static, right? You don't have environments that really breathe. Uh, Rainbow Six, we put a huge focus on our destruction, okay. uh, our wall destruction, our floor destruction. Uh, we have trap doors where you can actually come through one floor to another. So it's really kind of cool to show that off. You don't see it in any games mm. right now, and uh, Rainbow Six does it very well. I mean, you can even see it on their shirt, that logo. Suggests you're probably going to be breaking a fair few walls down as well. And, uh, I mean, one of the main things that I saw a whole lot of in the, in the sm small time I got to see this played out was the, uh, there's a whole lot of breach, like there's a lot of kind of setting up, there's a slow round timer, so I mean, you're looking at about, what is it, three minutes? About, yes. Yeah, so you basically have three minutes per round and people kind of immediately see that and think, okay, we're going to have slow gameplay, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite the opposite, you have this build up, it's the calm before the storm. That's it. And uh, I mean, what's the game mode that they're going to be playing these three minute round times in? So this is our secure area game mode, um, secure area. And it's similar to a King, uh, King of the Hill style. You have to stay on the point. Uh, there's a timer. It'll time up or time down. If the, if the other team is on the point, it'll stay static. So you need to hold the objective. You cannot leave it. Uh, you cannot just wander around the map. You need to stay close to it and, uh, and be there with your team. So when you're defending a point like this, it's, I always kind of have a, a little bit of intrigue with this one, is in terms of competitive balancing. Whenever you have this point thing where basically this cover you have to defend a point. Surely you ex anticipate there to be a degree of kind of favor for the defenders. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think a lot of games actually have this sort of mechanic where the defenders are favored slightly over the attackers, and I think it's actually a good thing. I mean, you make the attackers think a little bit more. They have to take their time. Uh, and as you can see here on the screen, we have what we call our operator system, and uh, this is what kind of turns the, uh, the tables here. The attackers, defenders, they have their own gadgets. Yeah, sure. And I mean, you have about 20 of them, so let's not kind of throw information at everybody at home. Instead, though, we can point out a few I did catch there, I think I saw one which I've seen an awful lot of thermite, something that I feel like we're going to be seeing an awful lot of. And we'll actually come back to that because this is going to be our first glimpse, our first taste of spectator cam. And uh, we see that 30 second countdown going on. This isn't the start of the round. What's going on here, Chris? Yeah, so we have 30 seconds. We call it the preparation phase. And what uh, the purpose is, the defenders have to set up their traps, their defenses. Uh, we have two reinforcement walls per character. And they're allowed to uh, barricade uh, windows and door frames. Those are unlimited. And the whole idea here is to just kind of set up a fortress around the objective. Yeah, and another interesting kind of thing on the other side of the coin for the attackers is this drone. You can see one there. It was actually Lucarian who was casting his eyes towards the players setting up their defenses. And it's kind of cool. So it's like a little bit almost like tower defense in that regard because you're creating like a unique environment for your team to hold. You can see the reinforced walls going down there. On the other side of things, the attacking side, they've basically attempted to scout out. I didn't catch a glimpse. Did they actually find the objective there? Yeah, so Lucarian had his uh, drone in one of our little vents uh, there, and he got an eye on the objective. He also okay. saw that all the uh, defenders were there, so they're pretty confident that they, they know where the objective is. Intriguing. And, I mean, we'll come back to the operators again. But first, you have to see three minutes and 30 still on the clock and it's going to come down to it's kind of a, is it a battle for intel i mean they know where the objective is but surely you have to clear the floors before you start just bomb rushing the objective that's it i mean what we've seen a lot so far is these guys have usually had a lot of the people downstairs close to the objective mm. and uh, they have one guy roaming so you can see here now they're, they're staying on the top floor they want to make sure nobody is around they already do i believe they do know the objective is on the bottom floor so they're just going to start clearing the rest of the building out and this is very kind of reminiscent of that tactical style you see. You know, you see in the movies, like, checking the rooms, clear, clear, process of elimination. And, I mean, let's talk about class for a second. You see Ash here, uh, held by the Germans. It's actually Valfa. I'm going to attempt to pronounce his name correctly. It's actually the hardest name so far on the list. But, I mean, talk to me about Ash. So Ash has what we call uh, a rocket pro breach charge essentially so it's non-lethal you can uh, tear down a wall from the distance uh, i believe you have two shots so uh she's very good to stay away uh and take down a wall and be safe she doesn't need to get in there and put a breach charge on the wall oh, is that our first frag we did actually just see one of the attackers go down and i can't imagine that's going to be a good feeling when you are when you're on the attacking side you need numbers especially in a game mode like this you really want to have all five when you go for your execute 
And actually, that's another kind of mechanic we're going to be seeing. Or rather, a gadget. Would you describe it as the uh, the chains? Yeah, the barbed wire there on the ground is very useful, and they put it in a really good spot at the bottom of the stairs. He comes down, he's exposed, and you have to me melee it. Wow, what a connection with the pistol, just destroying him. And I mean, I always. I always kind of write pistols off somewhat, even with that shield. I mean, like how much damage can you really do? He proves us wrong, and actually it's a bit of a flurry of frags. Three for four. Defenders do still have three players remaining, but I mean, losing two players this early without re any real process towards, uh, progress rather, towards the objective, that's going to be very nice equalizer from the attackers. The only issue that we have right now is that all three of the defenders are close to the objective, and uh, they don't have it... I I believe they don't have it right now, but we have a cluster charge, which you put onto a wall, and it actually throws grenades into the objective room. So if they actually have that class, uh, the defenders would be at a disadvantage, uh, but they seem to be pretty safe right now. And so let's jump on board with Legend if we can, because I did just see him plant a, uh, a charge on towards that wall. You can see him there. So this is, are they preparing for a push in? Is this what they're readying themselves for? That's it. So you can see there on the wall, we have these little red prongs sticking out. Those are our reinforced walls, and Thermite is the only one who can wow. take it out. Okay, so now they know they're coming and there's going to be frags as well. Rush takes one onto Max and look at this, Luke, Luke, is that Lucarian gets a frag as well? The bodies are dropping and that's actually going to be a very convincing first round for the German boys. Lucarian, he said he wanted to see stylish play and actually it's his team that manages to pick that one up. And I mean, what necessarily went wrong for the defenders there? They were the ones that got the first frag. Yeah, so uh, what did it look like there? They actually panicked. Uh, once the breaches went off, these guys, they got up, they started running uh, away from the objective, and we had two other guys on the opposite side of the uh, the room that actually caught them in the crossfire. So they kind of panicked a little bit. When you have synchronous breach charges, it really throws the defenders off. And so with the first round complete, you obviously have, do you have an opportunity to completely customize your operator going into round two? I can uh, see yeah. things changing. Yeah, so you can, you can be, pick your operator each round, and okay. uh, you can change things like your primary, uh, your primary, secondary, and your secondary gadget. The main gadget is always unique to the operators. That you cannot change, but all the secondary uh, weapons and whatnot you can. So you already kind of highlighted that you can't have the same operator on attack and defense. It's a completely different um, pool to pull from. And it looks like we're going to be going into our second round. Uh, we talked a little bit about Thermite. He was, of course, an attacking uh, operator. Can you give me a little bit of uh, a little bit of information on a defender? Let's go for Castle because we talked about that reinforced barricade. Okay, so Castle has uh, it's similar to a standard barricade, which everybody has, but it is stronger. So typically, when you come up to a regular barricade, you can oh, melee like it. This. Yes, this is the standard barricade. It takes shots very easily and it breaks very easily. The Castle barricade, however, is much much stronger and it takes a breach charge and or a lot of melees to tear down. Yeah, this is actually something I'm interested about. You did just see the barricade go down, then they threw the. Uh, barbed wire on top of that. This is, I mean, does sound play a big factor in this one? Because I assume breaking down a barricade and meleeing some barbed wire isn't going to be a quiet procedure. No, they, they, they're playing this very well uh, right now. You, uh, you saw them put the barricade again, like you said, just in front of the door. So once you hear them meleeing, you hear the, the wood drop, uh, they have to come in and they know, they, they know that they're going to be there. And uh, if the attackers are smart, they will not come in this, this room with this barbed wire once they tear down the door. Oh, as we're seeing a prime example of the, uh, the levels in play. It's actually going to be DND who's considering on that rappel. Barbed wire going up. And I can even hear that there's more barbed wire getting laid out as well. So, I mean, it can't be easy for the attackers. It does come down to doing what, exactly what they just did, which was they cut the numbers down to three before they executed onto the objective. And I'd be intrigued to see if uh, the Lucarian and his team, the German squad, are going to make the same mistake that their counterparts did. And here we see they're actually all coming up together, but are these barricades that these, the enemies have set up, or is this...? Yes, what you see there is okay. actually the castle barricade. The white barricade that's on the window right there um, is the castle barricade, so they need to use a breach charge here. I really like what they're doing, though. They're all coming up on the same side of the wall. He's going to breach in here, try to get a couple of hits, but he did, I don't think he sees anybody. That Now they're going to slow it down slightly. Already, though, one picked up for the defenders, so four players remaining as they're going to try and piece this one together. The European players looking to fight that quick equalizer. They don't want things to run away from them somewhat. And this is going to be our first exchange. It's actually with Valfa, who should pick up this frag. He doesn't, though. Drid. And looking for the trade-off. Actually, I'll tell you a lie. The X-ray kind of fooled me there. There is a man just beneath him. And he's made good progress. The objective, of course, on this floor. And Drid needs some backup, and he needs it fast. It seems like they're lacking a little bit of communication here. You've got Drid inside, very close to the objective. And the two other defenders, they're, they're unaware of this. They're not even looking towards him. So what are the defenders, what, what the defenders need to be doing differently here? I mean, I assume more barricades, more something to slow down, them down, because they're already here, and now they've got two minutes to just pick them apart. That's it. I mean, like I said earlier, they're spread out here. You need to stay a little okay. bit closer to the objectives. So uh, I don't know, maybe they have something in planned right now, but it doesn't seem to be working out too well. You can't exactly play for like a retake in this, because you have to be on the objective to keep maintain control. Exactly. 
Let's see where this goes from here then. Currently the numbers do stand at four to three. The attackers have been brought down to a pretty un uncomfortable situation. And you can see we saw just how powerful the pistol can be in the previous round. Not going to happen this time as he is going to be brought down, down. This is a perfect example of what I wanted to talk about just now, actually. It's called down but not out. Can we talk about that mechanic some more? Yeah, so as long as you're not headshotted, you do go down. Uh, you can actually move and you can also hold uh, your, your life. So as long as you're holding X, you'll stay alive a little bit longer. Here you can see that's done. He's picking him up. Um, you can move away so you do get some cover. He didn't seem to be uh, seem to need to do that right there. And he is revived so they're, they're back up a man so is that just another search for more kind of team play this is something you really want to focus on right is, exactly is team synergy and uh, being forced to kind of revive your teammates is decision you have to make play the objective get another man and it's good to see the revive comes in but in the meantime they have been brought down to two the defenders are doing a pretty damn good job here as it looks like the germans led of course by louis carrying you heard him on the microphone on the stage there with sean very comfortable and confident and am I seeing leaning there? Are they controlling that, or is it the auto lean? That's uh, that's they're controlling it. So okay, uh, on the on the remote, uh, you press your thumb pad down. You lean to the left and right. Either th uh, the, each thumb pad goes one direction. And on PC, it's the same thing with your your E and Q typically. I just heard some like sparks flying from that uh, barbed wire. Is that something different? Yeah, so that's one of our new... Oh, there we go. Very nice. I actually did not Solid. see what happened there. Uh, they basically whittled them down. <laughs> it was uh, it was kind of more so that the attackers were coming in one by one. Yeah. It was, uh, I liked the idea of it. You saw, of course, what Drid managed to do. Getting that early frag, mm -hmm. reaching all the right places just wasn't quite enough. And it felt like Lucarian was making all the right calls. Yeah, well, Drid was in the room there. He should have actually called for backup. And right. they should have joined him in that room. Uh, a lot of the walls that are in that room, uh, on the opposite side, there's the they're all destructible. They can shoot through them, they can breach them, and they didn't utilize that. Uh, I mean, I keep mentioning the, Ucla the Lucari. Let me talk about a little bit more of that roster. You have High Five Legend, Castriera, Valtha, Rush, and Lucarian. And on the other side of things, the European side, we have IMAX, Dread, of course, we talked about him before, Zero, GGC Moa, probably going to be butchering that name as well, and Dastan is their fifth. Uh, so, I mean, 2 0 already. It's first to six. I'm not sure if we mentioned that beforehand. Yeah, that's correct. That's right. And I see six and immediately my kind of my competitive FPS brain goes, hang on, that doesn't sound like enough. But already we're seeing those rounds are long and it's not necessarily about quantity, it's about the quality of the round and looks like we're gonna be seeing a whole lot of barricades set up here. Yeah, so as you're saying, it, it does seem a little bit long, but really the matches are pretty quick, and uh, there is a, a threshold point. You, you started off three minutes, four minutes in, and uh, the last minute is when everybody starts pushing it in. You saw that last round too. It was kind of stagnant at the, at the middle of the game, mm. but then you have to start pushing it when there's a, bit of a minute left to get the objective. Yes, I mean, time becomes your, your biggest enemy at some point as the attackers, and you can see everything getting set up. I saw a whole lot of barricades, and this we haven't talked too much about the drones. We kind of mentioned, oh, barbed wire stops drones. Yeah, so you brought it up a little bit earlier, one of our new um, gadgets is the electrified barbed wire. So as you saw there, it does kill uh, the drones. Oh, wow. And he did not see it, so he ran right into it and he lost his drone. However, you do have another drone. You can throw another one. It doesn't seem like they're doing it now. I don't know what they have for visibility, but I would suggest throwing another drone out. Well, considering one of the main points that we're already kind of starting to discover is it's all about intel, all about that gathering information without the loss of life. Mm -hmm. Drones do that perfectly, right? Yes, yeah. You're a mobile camera. I assume, you, can you kind of maneuver yourself around the whole map or do like stairs pose a problem for you? Well, with, with good players, typically they do that. They put the electrified barbed wire at the top of the stairs so the drone has no access. Right. Um, they have it again here. You see another drone trying to get into the bottom right corner here, but the barbed wire is electrified oh, and there is another drone that goes down. <laughs> exactly. So they're playing this pretty smart right now. I'm, I'm kind of impressed. It's like robot wars. You can just see they're just going in and that's the big <laughs> boss bot. Uh, it does look like they're going to start. This, so this is another drone. This is that backup drone we were talking about. Yeah, exactly. So they decided they don't have enough of visibility, so he's going to throw another one in. He's not taking the stairs that the other two drones nice. took. And he's also right now, he's scouting on the second floor to see if there's any lingerers around. And of course, there is more barbed wire posing the biggest threat so far for these drones. Is he going to be the third one that just rolls on into his doom? Let's see what happens here. I mean, oh, he just managed no. to narrowly get past it. So just, is the non-electrified barbed wire... Oh, hang on, we've just had first blood. GG Mo, I said I was going to butcher his name, I just did. But he does manage to find a frag and the attack is already brought down to four. As you were saying uh, earlier, uh, the yeah. standard barbed wire does not actually kill the drones. It's only the new uh, electrified ones. So okay. you can kill the electrified barbed wire. You just have to disable it by shooting the battery that's in the middle of it, and then the drone can get through free. Another thing that is very good to pay attention to is that the Twitch drone uh, actually can shoot and disable this battery. So um, this is something that they're not utilizing right now, and they could have gotten more visibility if they did. And I mean, all, these, all of these uh, different operators going to be trying to uh, push their way in. Let's have a little look more at the kind of the FPS side of things. You can see 
he can jump on into the eyes uh, with his P90. It was actually Dastan who had that. And actually, he's going to be using that. I, mean, I always get scared when I see a P90, Chris. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's so many bullets. How, have you been looking into balancing weapons? Yeah, well, this is what we're expecting. We, we want a lot of feedback to come in. Um, the game will need some balancing eventually. But uh, the P90 right now it seems pretty, it's pretty fair. Um, again, it's mostly a focus on uh, the gadgets and, and, using, and using them first. Uh, the guns will come oh, along eventually, and we'll start fixing everything awesome. if there are issues. So, three versus three, then, as it does get a level playing field. Drib was the one to bring Lucarian down, but he can still watch from the sidelines. As we'll see, the objective getting closed in on. Let's see where they choose to push this one. Still looking a little scattered, though, as they do manage to find another defender as it comes down to two members remaining. Drid and IMAX need to keep this site safe, and it's going to come down to an execute. Legend was setting something up there as well. As you can see, Drid in eyes. Oh, my God, he caught a glimpse. Not going to be able to find the frag just yet, though, as he does... Find a fresh mag and are going to go for the repeat using that lean mechanic we were just talking about. What I really like there is actually he pre-made the hole. So uh, if that was not made, he would have not had any visibility and he managed to actually see him come by. <gasps> now they're, push they're pushing on him and there you go. Yeah, he's as good as dead. 1v3 then and that's not going to be too damn easy. As he does bring it down to a 1v2, it's all onto IMAX then and he's looking to try and hold this objective safe. They have to come to him. That's something not going to happen, though, as he does take a second with him. Trying to keep it exciting, but that's a third in a row for Lucarian and his boys. It's looking pretty rough. Looking pretty rough. So we need to kind of get a bit more backstory on the on the, on the these teams. We've already talked to... So we heard on stage that there are players that have... They've all, they have come from the closed alpha. Is that correct? That's right. So they've all had a degree of experience. Is there anyone that's got more so than others? Yeah, so Lucarian came to Ubisoft Montreal uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he actually had the opportunity to test the build, see some of the things that we're not showing here. So he has a bit more experience, and he's familiar with the game. Uh, the same thing with David Parks, who was on one of the other teams. They know the game a little bit more than some of the other people here. And again, just to stir a little bit of controversy, we do have certain players playing with the controller and certain playing with uh, mouse and keyboard. That most definitely is going to be controversial. There's always going to be a, a bit of a battle between PC and console. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's very clear that you're going to, have to be much more precise with a mouse. It's just because that's what it provides. Mm -hmm. and Xbox players, excuse, rather the controller players, are going to have to try and... Uh, I mean, they're going to have to try and really focus on... Uh, not necessarily out aiming, but rather out playing their opponents. That's it, yeah. In, they, that, in that case, they need to utilize, utilize their gadgets properly. And again, the game is very, very lethal. So as long as you get those first couple of bullets off, the controls are not that big of a deal. Just keep your line of sight, make sure you don't move from your spot, then you'll do pretty well. Yeah, and uh, with 20 seconds left on that setup period, we can just see the drone starting to gather intel. Like, you can park them up as well, so you can kind of leave them somewhere, come back to them, and uh, gather information that way. Now, Let's see whose eyes we want to jump on into as they do finish their setup. Five seconds left on this one, and you can see which floor are they on now? Is that second floor? That is the second floor, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, is this... You, I mean, have you already found in your playtest that there are some like some floors that are more difficult to hold than others? Yeah, well, the basement is, is always one of the, the, the safest to hold. You okay. cannot repel up to the windows. I mean, you have to go down, and you can pretty much hold the whole basement floor um, easily. Uh, the same thing with the top floor. There's a lot of areas to go around, but I mean, once you fortify pretty well, there's, there's not much you can do about it. The other floors, they're, like they're doing now on the second floor, you don't see this too often, so I'm kind of curious how this is going to play out. So it's their choice, is it, which floor, which floor they want to exactly, hold? Exactly, yeah. yes. Okay. And, the, and the same thing with the attack inside. They can choose their insertion location and the defenders can choose their defensive location okay so they made the choice to go for the second floor a surprise to chris let's see if it's a surprise to the attackers as these are the boys that really need to start picking up rounds three nil the score and in the next three minutes they're going to be desperately trying to pick up the first as again they feel quite spread out the attackers coming in from every angle and i mean i can see the advantages of that that kind of swarming effect being able to pincer movement in but it also does mean you're vulnerable to being picked apart by angles held by the defenders. And I talk about that, you can see a prime example of that in the eyes of uh, Heil Zoll. Malta there, he's holding that corner in that doorway. And as soon as they push down, as soon as they make any noise, he is going to be ready and waiting. He set up a barricade. He does catch a glimpse. He's not going to find the frag just yet, though. That is not ideal. Did manage to put lay down just a scrap of damage. But he's made his whereabouts known and managed to keep that site safe. Not ideal, but not awful either. And see, they cannot come down the stairs. They have the electric, uh, electrified barbed wire there. There's a lot of barbed wire too, so it's not worth the risk. They're going to have to find another way to come in. He's trying it though. They're trying to find the angle. It's going to come down to aim at this point. As they, Oh my god, there's two of them. This could get nasty very quickly. And I think he's decided against it. I mean, he's created a very nice little base for himself. He looks very comfortable there, and he's going to have another go. This should be a frag, it is. He's not even going to be down, but not out. He is fully down, and that's going to be a second quickly following it. 
thanks to Cass and his SMG. And oh, that is not looking good for the attackers. As already they are down what should what should and could be two men. It looks like the revives actually coming in from zero, so that's really fortunate as they managed to maintain four. Now. So again, you can see here they have barbed wire on every floor of the stairs. He cannot go up. He's got a nice line of sight there at the top of the stairs. Although I missed that a little bit. It seems like he got taken out. Ooh, very, very rough. Very rough right now. Five on one. Yeah, awful. And I mean, you know what I'm going to ask you when we see a 1v5 is how, how likely have clutch has been in your playtest? Is a clutch something you can pull apart? I feel like with the fact that it's so strategy, communication, team-based, it almost should be impossible. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can use the gadgets that are around the map to, to help you a little bit, but it's going to be extremely hard to take care of this. And um, I, I'm not, uh, I don't think I favor this too much. It's not going to happen. <laughs> You're not sold, are no, you, No, I'm not sold. You're not sold. As he's trying to make a way up. So that took him a while, but he does manage to... Oh my god, he's got the drop on one. That's something. That's a start then for Drid as Lucarian does go down. But he's, of course, not quite out of this yet. They're going to just charge him. This oh, could this go horrible. Has he got enough ammo? He's going to get pushed down. He does have the first frag. Legend now down. Lucarian, of course, down, but not out. This is going to get another oh one. My oh my god. god, you said it wasn't likely. It's a 2v1. Two more players to find. 53 seconds to do it. This could go insane. Back into the eyes of this man. Dread holding the angles, he's anticipating someone to push him, and of course, you know, with him. Oh my god, it's a 1v1. This dream is becoming a reality now, as he is just going to be watching Lucarian bleed out. He can't cross, he can't afford to cross because he's in that corner. Dread has the perfect angle. You said, Chris, you said it was impossible, and he's getting dangerously close here. He has to start getting onto the objective. They are both capping it right now, and you see Lucarian there, he's DBNO, and he's coming out, and he's in the corner. Oh. Beautiful hold then from Valpha. It was looking so damn good for him. He made a real dent in that one, and that's going to be a motivator. Not quite enough, though, to pick up the win, but... I mean, you said... Yeah. I almost ate my words there. Yeah, I, I was worried. Really I was really worried. Words. We'd just gone and said it's not going to happen, and he was about to show us up. But just in the end of things, fortunately, those last two, Valpha managing to keep things together for his team, and that's going to put four then on the board, and that should... You see, head, headphones off. They're going to be the victors in this one. Not too shabby. Not